Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Abel Dinonaire has been seen in the following publications, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler, and my wife is here today. Say hi, Arlene. Arlene Seiler. Okay. And um, before we begin our uh, wonderful show today, uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation, and many others, including the help from Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont. Um, we would like to say um, thank you to Zachary Hughes of Washington County Mental Health uh, for coming on today's show. Uh, today is about advocacy and crisis uh, health management and uh, many other th new things that are happening in Washington County Mental Health. And uh, welcome Zachary Hughes to Able In On Air. It's nice to be with you, Larry. Uh, thank you for coming again. Um, let's uh, talk about advocacy. Um, uh, you know, you're a big, huge, strong advocate in the field of special needs and Washington County uh, mental health. Um, uh, and since we are uh, in the holiday spirit of, I know uh, this will be edited after July 4th, but uh, Ron Kovic was a, an, a an, an advocate in the war times of... Um, of Vietnam War, and mm -hmm. he's a huge advocate in, um, you know, uh, Viet in, in uh, advocacy services with soldiers. Um, how with uh, that movie Born on the Fourth of July? Mm -hmm. How does your advocacy uh, within Washington County Mental Health deal with uh, or kind of mesh with Mr. Kovic's advocacy? Well, I think. I think it meshes if, uh, you know, we have to help somebody who's a veteran and we connect with them by talking with them and stuff um, and then uh, go from there, you know. It does kind of, it is kind of a mesh um, because, you know, there are veterans who, who, who do need services and, um, you know, so it's good to be able to reach out with them and uh, get the services they need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are plenty of veterans' uh, services out there. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of, is there any services that Washington County offers for veterans and how? Well, I, I believe that they just, you know, if a veteran came in, they would be working with them and we'd talk with them and mm -hmm. see what they needed and uh, we would go from there. Um, so what, uh, what, um, has changed with Washington County mental health and um, with you working with them for so many years in crisis management, uh, how has things changed and services changing? Um, I know budgets are a big thing uh, when you're, but with, when you're in crisis, budgets kind of go out the window mm -hmm. when you need help. Well, yeah. So explain. 
Well, I think the change is that, um, you know, we did weather through COVID and um, mm -hmm. we were able to, um, you know, gain more resources in there and uh, more recognition of the mental health system and what part it plays. Uh, and the uh, peer system was uh, instrumental as well and has changed to adapt to the COVID world and being able to connect with people, you know, in various ways. Um, you know, we worked from our homes during the, during the um, you know, beginning of the COVID situation and we adapted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the agency has done. Do you think that that was extremely difficult? Or in your opinion, being an advocate, has it been extremely difficult for people with mental illness or mental challenges during this COVID situation? I, I, do, um, I do think it was Especially difficult. now, because we have this new variant, quote unquote. I do, uh, I do think it was difficult. Um, and it also, um, people were not used to it. I don't think anyone's gonna come out of there and say, oh, I had a great time while I was uh, in my house. I, you know, it, it's, um, it's something that was a challenge for people, and it was a 100, it was a 100 year event. Really was, if you think about the last time we had something like this, was in 1918. So I would say mentally, though, mentally. Oh, you mean with the, the yeah, flu, the the flu epidemic? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I just, you know, I think it was difficult for people mentally, and that's why we adapted to uh, work with it. We had a phone line that people were calling. Uh, uh, during the epidemic, during the epidemic, uh, we had two services that were our uh, two uh, programs that that helped with that. Um, our Sunrise program and our Maple House. Um, as you remember, the Maple House bed program, we a few of our staff couldn't work uh, in the bed at that time, including me. So uh, we started a phone line from our homes. We were able to do that. So, so what that was uh, an adaptation. For those that don't know. Um, I know we've touched on it with the show, but those who don't know what the Maple Bed program so the Maple is, House, can you explain yes, what that I is? Yes, I can. Uh, the Maple House Bed is uh, for individuals in our uh, CSP program who um, need a break from wherever they're, they're at, and they just take a few days. Sometimes we've gone longer, and it's, a, it's known as a peer crisis bed. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's one bed? Yes, it is one bed. In, in a building? Yes, that's correct. And we oh. actually uh, have moved into town now. We have a new facility um, that's right next to our Sunrise Day Center. So it's really, um, really good. And I, but what's, I wanted, the, what's the new facility? Well, the new facility is um, just something that, you know, is down at the uh, Bluins, old Bluins building. And... Um, we have a we have a, a portion of it on the side of uh, a Dow, Dowling Street, I believe Downing Street. So it's a very nice facility. It's the new Maple House. Um, the one that we had before was up on Heaton Street. Um, and Which I, is that Heaton Street is no longer. Well, Heaton Street is our transitional program now. Um, you know, so they'll they actually have two beds up there for their transitional people who are homeless. So, so those came online, yes. Um, Anything you want to add to that, um, Arlie? I want to ask something. Have you seen, has mental cases risen since the pandemic? Yes. Okay. Wow. Me, uh, uh, the mental system. challenges, rather. Yeah. How, how, well, how? Mental, I mean, uh, mental health cases, of course they have. And I'm sure people have called Washington County yes. asking for help or various other sources, but you know, one of the things that we did at Washington County is uh, we reached out, as you know, you guys I interviewed many people, um, and uh, they... Including they, the wonderful... Mary Malton, um, right. Mary Malton, yeah. and um, that new Snoozlin room. Well, yeah. it's five years in the making, but right. that, new, that, that Snoozlin room that we just did um, a wonderful interview. Yeah, it was a beautiful spot, wasn't it? Was, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just want to say that they have, you know, Mary's ads have been extremely reassuring. So the advertising campaigns were running um, and the ability to adapt to the new, new. Uh, well, they said the new normal, but uh, 
Yeah, I love it when they say new normal, but it's not really. And, and personally, well, being a journalist for 25 years, um, just a little comment. Um, uh, people in in the mental health, um, uh, uh, in in the mental health work work of mental health social workers and so the, there's been you know ver bad press at some point about people with mental health yes how um has the in your opinion especially now with covid and this <coughs> uh, that will continue for a while how has the um how has people with mental health or mental health challenges been treated through the media uh, do you, have you seen any changes or has it gotten worse on how the media has treated people with mental health and what is a message that you can convey today um, uh, for those that are in social work or in in the mental health from uh, well, um, uh, work field yeah well uh, let's just convey that uh, that it is okay that if you I think the good news, we did talk a couple of years ago about the media portrayal of mental health. And but has it gotten worse? No, since I don't think the COVID. media portrayal has gotten worse with COVID. In fact, I think it's gotten a little bit better because they've recognized, you know, that mental health is a major, you know, player since people have been in their houses. I mean, try being in your, you know. And you have a mental health condition. Well, okay, let's no, let's go from though. one question. Uh, continue the question, and then we can go to this. Yeah. So, so the whole point is, I want to say that I think the media has gotten better with it because we've been able to really come out and say it's okay to have this. People who say, "Oh, it's not," you know, prior to our 2018 interview, when you had a 2018 interview, I was saying, you know, that people didn't want anything to do with mental health, um, really, because they had a hard time with it, and there was a stigma. There's still a stigma out there, but we're kind of coming out and saying, listen, it's okay to call us. It's okay to call Washington County. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing, and they're here to talk. So, it's, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. Plus, I think people recognize, listen, I was depressed while I was, you know, in my house, or this is crazy, I've got to stay in here for six months, you know, or, you know, so it's, it's really, uh, COVID, I think, has done a little bit of a service. It has not done a service as far as, you know, it's made it, I think it's made it worse with the population, with everybody, because, I mean, worse in the fact of symptoms, because people are just, they're not used to having to do all this stuff. Wear a mask, uh, you know, all that stuff. And, and Governor Scott kind of passed a ruled that if you have anxiety or you're mm -hmm. or you or you're constricted you feel exactly. uh, constricted uh meaning closed in mm -hmm. from the mask you don't have to right wear. right he did do that yes and i think what's great about vermont just want to say it um you know in a sense just for a second is that vermont was uh overall pretty pretty understanding about the needs uh based on the emergency and from governor scott versus the other states. And that's why we, you know, we had the vaccine rate at around 80% now and we're 82. 82 thank you. Uh, changes sorry, sorry. That's okay. I don't keep, I keep a little bit of track of those numbers, but it, it has made it so that we're, we're where we are today. Yeah. Um, um, now yeah. getting to the question of homelessness that yeah. my wife um, mentioned, uh, you, you still there? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I Um, well, I haven't been homeless, so I wouldn't know that, but I will say that I think people... What services, let's oh, piggyback, okay. what services, um, I think what my wife was trying to ask, what services does mental health, uh, does Washington County Mental Health have for homelessness, well, and um, is there a huge number of, it, it, do you know if... Do you know the numbers, or is there a yes, huge I number of homelessness numbers. and mental health issues? I do problems. have some numbers for homeless, and uh, what I will say first is that Washington County has been able to acquire some resources to assist 
homeless uh, individuals, uh, including a couple, you know, they had I know you're on the homelessness right, task I'm force. Right, I'm on the Montpelier Homelessness Task Force. Um, and um, what I will say is that Washington County has acquired at least a couple of new social workers. Um, one was one was with the um, is with the police department, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't really deter people. I know it does when they hear the police department, but the idea is, you know, to help out with the, you know, homeless plus. So we the have, person works for Washington County, yeah. but is at the police department. Is yeah has uh, is shared with the Barry and Montpelier. Uh, police department through a grant. That's one, and we just acquired another worker to work uh, around the uh, federal funding around the new grant uh, that comes down with the homeless uh, money that can place that can pay for rent and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and all kinds of funds. So I think that they have a good thing. Now I'll give you some numbers from what we understand. There were around just under 300 people who are homeless in the county. Now. As hang, of lately, hang, as of late. Yeah, under, just under 300. That's not a lot, though. Okay, yeah. And there was uh, around 78 who had to exit hotels. Uh, 78 of those three under 300 had to exit um, hotels. Now, what, you need, what I need to emphasize is probably a few of them got to stay because there was a... Um, there was a lawsuit filed by legal aid. Um, and they, legal aid, yeah, it, legal aid the free filed, lawyers, right? Yeah, they filed a lawsuit with the uh, to get injunctive relief around some a uh, sm handful of disabled uh, who were in the hotels who weren't really um, the wording was a little bit murky under the governor's, um, you know, under the uh, agency human services. When so you anyway, say uh, I'm sorry for interrupting. When you say murky. In this sense, what you... It means that they would have been kicked out of the hotel. Yeah. Uh, the ones with the, but the governor's office has uh, assured everybody that uh, actually they have expanded the disabled um, definition. Well, speaking about homelessness and mental health, yeah. Good Sam and I'm going to mention them because yeah. they're a wonderful Absolutely, organization within please. Washington County. Good Samaritan just required, uh, just acquired, excuse me, um, one of the hotels on Barry Montpelier Road yes. to turn it, I'm not sure which one. Twin City. The, the Twin, what? Twin City. The Twin City Motel. Mm -hmm. um, it, to turn it, I guess, into a hub shelter? Uh, yes, I believe So how would that work in your... I believe that'll work very nicely in our, uh, in our nice collaborative uh, work. Uh, just... It's an it's an added. Is know, it reason. because Barry the Barry Good Samaritan building can't house so many people? I think it just adds adds additional um, space. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I think there's going to be some unique work done in there. Okay. So I, but I don't know what that is because that's Good Samaritan. And I have really no, no, no. I'm I'm mentioning it right. Washington within. Well, Washington, Washington County, County, I think, is you know good partners with Good Samaritan. So I mean. You know, this might be this might be extremely useful. In fact, I will say it's extremely useful. Um, and this co the other thing COVID did, by the way, really quickly, is it opened up a little lens to the homeless um, homelessness problem. Before COVID, people were kind of like, oh, I don't think it's that bad. And um, and so well, sleep. I. Uh, sleeping outside yeah. in the winter. Right. That is why. And, and, and camping, they were camping. Right, right. But I. Well, that that's why. Um, if you're aware of the more the I think I'm pronouncing the eviction it right. more the, the moratorium. Yeah. I think I'm I'm saying it right. Um, different states and also the nation. Um, um, they put a stop to throwing people out in That's the correct. street That's what they did. because they, they couldn't pay rent. Right. Where are they going to go? They can't be out in the street. That's correct. Uh, well, one of the things I've been concerned about with the eviction moratorium is, um, you know, when that ends, and that will end eventually. The good news is, we first of all, the good news, federal funding is out there so that that can be averted. You can get your rent paid for way back. If now, you is know there, where to look. speaking about mental health, yeah. since we're on the topic of sure. that, um, it, 
is there, let's say you do diagnose physical and mental challenges. Okay, okay. that's the duel. Yeah. Is there extra money? Example, I know that Israel and some other country, if, you, if you're over there and you have certain challenges, they give you extra money mm -hmm. for housing, right. food, etc. Within Washington County, um, if you need extra assistance with housing or you need extra assistance with certain things, does Washington County have a fund for housing per se? It depends. Um, depends what services you're receiving. Um, but what I wanted to re. Um, we do have that. It depends on what services you're receiving. Right now, because of the extra COVID money coming through from Washington, um, there's all kind. Of, there's resources um, that Washington County is, um, you know, trying to connect with or have connect with in order to uh, guide the clients to these uh, funding sources. Mm -hmm. uh, they do, as I say, have some uh, funding support, but it depends on what service you're getting. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to mention that that emergency fund that is being commercial from the Vermont State Housing Authority that's being advertised widely on your TV. That's for emergency um, situations. You know, your rent is back several months um, or something like that. You can access that. Um, there's other funding sources coming on. You know, online. So yeah, so Washington County has that extra. If if they don't, if they have it, but if they don't have it, they can direct the clients to this um, to this other fund, mm -hmm. and they ha they have you know the ability because you know they do uh, work with various landlords and housing, and we're bringing on you know new partners every day. So it's not that's the unique and exciting work that's going on right now in that uh, aspect. You mm -hmm. know. Um, I do remain concerned with the um, eviction moratorium coming off and suddenly uh, having, so? having all these people who um, couldn't pay rent during the during the and suddenly they're uh, you know they're having to uh, scramble to um, you know figure it out and that's why I'm hopeful that Washington County and other providers will be able to direct these people to the right funding so this doesn't happen. Any any other questions you want to add, um, Arlene? I want to ask, um, I heard, you know, like, the emergency fund, does it help with pay rent? Yeah, yes, yeah. the emergency money through the Vermont State Housing Authority can help pay rent um, or pay, you know, the back rent, and I think some back utilities as well. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is just... Uh, been coming online and they advertise it on TV and it's all over the place so you know you would apply through Vermont State Housing Authority if you want to do it in fact I have a friend who did that um, you know I just we really am worried about this idea of you know people who didn't pay their rent and so, because either they couldn't or they thought oh I don't have to pay my rent Ed and so now we, you know, there's this little scramble. The Biden administration has said they will not extend the eviction moratorium past the 31st of July. Okay. So just so, yeah. Yeah, um, because uh, uh, um, you know, with those stimuluses, yeah, you would assume people can pay some rent. That would be an assumption. Um, the stimulus is, was meant to stimulate that and help people get through, but not everybody went that route with the stimulus. And so I, um, I just, I think it's important to know that we have a nice umbrella of support and services in place uh, right now. Mm -hmm. well, that's, a, that's a good thing. We yeah. don't people need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, give us... Give us, um, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, what do you think the future of mental challenges is with Washington County, mental health and-, and Continuing to uh, serve the community and, and widening the horizons. We have a great administration in Washington right now 
I don't expect any um, you know, problems with that. And uh, we have supportive um, leaders here in Vermont. Um, and I think it's really um, cool that uh, we have that ability. And even, you know, I think the agencies in Washington County is also interested in making sure that workers take care of themselves. And I think it's really important that people exercise self-care. I have started doing this. If I could please have a minute and just say that Go ahead. I went into COVID scared uh, because I, you know, I have a disability and I thought I would be really sick if I caught this thing. And, and uh, I just decided to make some changes after COVID. And one of them was I'm going to start saying no to certain things and also taking care of myself more. Uh, yeah, because I wasn't doing that. And so it's really important to take care of yourself. Choose one thing a day you'll do for yourself. Choose one thing a day you do for yourself. I hear people, I don't have time for that. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, if some you, people in this life, well, some people in this, in, oh, oh, I work too much. I don't have time to eat. Well, you know what? You got to take time make to the eat. Time. Uh, because I'll tell you, if you don't make the time, it's going to come back and bite you. Uh, and you may miss opportunities. So the idea of one of the things I'm going to do to self care myself this year is I am taking a vacation uh, sometime in August. So uh, that's something I want to do. But the biggest change was just that I was going to make changes after COVID and I, or after the uh, severe COVID uh, part. And I, and I did that. So mm -hmm. anyone can do that. And don't say I can't do that because you can. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yep. Okay. And uh, with that said, we would like to thank Zachary Hughes of uh, advocate for Washington County Mental Health. Um, um, by the way, what is your title exactly? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's assistant team leader at Maple House, but I carry many duties over there related to the peer programming. Okay. Um, so, so we would we say you're a peer advocate for Washington you, County Mental Health? You can say that, yes. Okay. You can say that. Um, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able did on air. For more information on Washington County Mental Health and their services, um, you can um, uh, you can call um, 802 229 if you're in crisis. 802 229 um, Do you have the information about? Um, the Vermont State Housing Authority and so? Uh, just their uh, website. I believe it's vhsa.org. Okay, so if you would like more information on um, extra COVID uh, funding uh, for um, any housing uh, problems you may have, you can go to www.vsha.org. vsha.org. Or if you're in crisis again, 802-229-0591. Uh, again, we would like to thank our sponsor, Washington County Mental Health um, Services and uh, Green Mountain Support Services and many, many, many others, including the uh, support uh, of uh, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired um, as a partner of Able Dead on Air. Uh, this has been Able Dead on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Abled in on Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Able Den On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. 
Abel de Donner has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Abel de Donner is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter.